healing from a soul-destroying relationship can be in itself a reconnection to oneself, the very essence of oneself that feels like it's been torn asunder and left with a wound, almost a traumatic wound that we now need to heal from something where we thought we could connect with a person that could share our vulnerabilities. But sometimes those vulnerabilities get exploited, but sometimes those vulnerabilities get used and abused. And then we have to go on a healing journey from this. So as there's a lot of stress around this and EFT tapping is a stress reduction tool, let's do an EFT tapping on healing from a soul destroying relationship. So taking full responsibility for your own well-being and repeating after me as we begin to tap, let's go let flow. Even though the person that I thought I would share my life with now feels like I have to spend the rest of my life healing from. And they have left a soul destroying wound in my essence of self. And I'm open to loving and accepting myself. Even though who I was as a person did connect to another person. And now I have to heal the times when I disconnect from myself, from when the pain of the relationship became too much. And I'm open to loving and accepting myself. Even though the experiences that I had, not a lot of people want to have time for. So I may have to heal and grow up on my own two feet. And I'm open to loving and accepting myself. This soul destroying relationship this disconnection from self. This disconnection from my rationale that was led to believe that receiving harm was a form of love. There are good times and there are bad times. And when there are more bad times than good times, I might do what I can to avoid those bad times so I can have those good times. Which in other words might mean I might do a lot of people pleasing. Make sure the waters aren't rocky. Make sure everyone else's needs are attended to. So I don't receive the bad and I don't receive the harm. And if I do what I'm told, then I receive good treatment, which might be in the form of love and attention. So I might sustain a lot of punishment for little oases of good. And the more that I try to be good, the more that I find out that I'm the bad one. At least in the other person's eyes. That person I'm jumping through hoops for. Putting on quite a good show. So others don't see the harm that's being done. And when I try to speak up, that's a major inconvenience. And if the charade is good enough, if the harm behind the closed doors is being well hidden, and I'm like the boy that cried wolf. 
no one believes that person even though they might be right and there was a wolf in sheep's clothing all along causing harm to my sense of self my sense of self may have been left bewildered about what is right and wrong Because if I'm always doing what I think is right for a person's wrong behaviour, it's not really good role modelling. Because I'll never be right when another person feels wrong about myself. It's a losing battle. <laughs> One, I don't seem to be able to win. And I never seem to get my peace my peace of mind, my personal peace of safety, and my sense of self for myself. Because whatever I do, feels like it's being watched and monitored and controlled and who I talk to and the perceived interaction of that. It's never seen good eyes by a person who always views me as wrong. And whoever I chat to, they might be the green eyed monster, ready to say, ready to accuse. Are you having an affair? What was your attention behind what you said then? I don't appreciate that tone of voice. All these having to explain myself to a person who never accepted me in the first place. And who I talk to and the attention I give maybe because they see myself or myself and not a person to take from, but rather to listen to and get value from. And unfortunately for the green-eyed monster, where attention goes, jealousy flows. And the more you try to convince that you're right, more someone will see you as wrong because their mind is made up that you're untrustworthy if i'm untrustworthy it's very hard to gain trust on someone that will never see me as trustworthy and this sense of self might start to blame oneself that I didn't do enough. I might second guess myself. I might feel a lot of guilt from having healthy interactions with others and having unhealthy explanations from a person that wants to know where I am at all times because if I'm somewhere else I'm not there for them. The attention's not on them. So therefore I can't share my attention with anyone else. I'm not pleasing them. I'm not doing enough. And I never feel enough by someone that has unreal expectations of myself. It feels like a no-win battle. Dan if I do, Dan if I don't. Because they might get fed up with my company. And demand that I go make friends. If I give attention to other people. Where attention goes, jealousy flows. And it becomes a vicious cycle. 
but I seem to be worn down upon. You know, anyone that seeks control about someone else doesn't really show much control. It's kind of always having surveillance cameras in operation. Just in case someone might break in. It kind of shows a level of insecurity. But if I can't trust someone else, I'm going to have to monitor them. And it feels like I'm living my life. Healing an insecure person's security issues. And are those my issues? Or issues that I'm being told to solve? This healing of self from the soul-destroying relationship These interactions that I have with other people may start to indicate that I need some healing. So it feels very confining living in a controlling environment. I don't have the freedom to move. I feel very heavy with fear, very confined in my thought patterns. That I can't think outside someone else's needs. That I must always be there for them. On call. Doing my duty. That when I have interactions with other people. When I'm given my freedom. And people see me for me. I feel a lot lighter on myself. My sense of self. My soul of self feels lighter from not being confined so much. And I start to measure this up. That the more that I have to return to my cell, the less of this lighter feeling that I have. And these interactions that people have with myself don't match up with the reality of all the demeaning things that I'm told, of all the limiting aspects of myself, of all my personal attributes that I should be ashamed of from when I'm back within this relationship. And is it an equal opportunity relationship? Or am I being taken opportunity from? Am I a person who has a lot of skills and attributes that the other person does not like? At least for me to have. There might be a lot of copycat behaviour. Where they like what I have to offer as long as I'm not offering it. Because it might make them look good in other people's eyes. As long as their eyes aren't on me. And what I have to offer. And the person saying it. Has the attention on them. And it feels terribly invalidating. To have my experiences. My knowledge. To be taken from. And to be, be denied that it was mine in the first place. And be paraded about as if it was their idea. This plagiarism of self. This violation of self. This invalidation of self. Better to be seen and not heard. And sometimes even seeing myself triggers an outrage. I might learn to control my expression and show no expression at all. 
is if I smile at the wrong time, if I glance at the right time, that might warrant some abuse. So I learn to control my expression as I learn to control my expression of self. All this control, all this confinement, all this keeping myself small, like a flower hiding in the shadows, afraid to blossom, afraid to grow, due to the pain of always being cut down by those that I thought that cared, by those that I thought were nurturing, by those that I thought would give me care and attention. And now I have to heal the soul-destroying wound from ever living a lifetime from that. But I'm a pretty strong cookie. So I sustained so much for so long. And it doesn't mean that I have to sustain the lessons from those who failed to teach kindness. I don't have to see myself as a failure. I had some adverse conditions. That I learned to adapt. That I learned to survive. That it got me to the point that that lighter feeling that acknowledgement from others, and even that acknowledgement of self, started to shed that load. And sort of had that separation of self, where I could recognize at least that treating myself with decency, treating myself with kindness, within myself felt right, and within myself felt light. And I might start to consider checks and balances of which is more valuable to me. Always serving the needs of someone that can't serve it themselves. As they are past that baby stage, they are able to take care of their own needs as an adult. That's not my service and duty to fulfill. Or do I want to start to live my life in service of myself and of my own needs and have an equal opportunity of relationship? It's give and take and take and give, where it's shared experiences, rather than dominating experiences. And if I value the lighter feeling, rather than being confined, always treated with disdain, then I'm on this healing journey healing that wound, getting my sense of self back, recovering myself, shifting through the rubble and connecting to my inner self and nurturing my own self. There are some things that do weigh me down. But I don't need to carry someone else's load. I can let that shit go with the flow. And start to recover myself. Other people's loads aren't mine. And I refuse to be dumped on anymore. I'm acknowledging myself. I am acknowledging all the strength that it took. To survive the unsurvivable. And if I have the energy for that, I definitely have the energy. 
I definitely have the courage to heal from this experience, to give myself new experiences and not be defined by those people that tried to confine me. I'm forming a relationship with myself. I'm starting to heal those wounds. And though they may leave a scar, they'll leave a remembrance of what I came from, what I had to heal from, and definitely what not to be. I'm healing the sense of self. All the pain and the guilt. All the things I had to do to survive. All the shame and blame. I did so well. I'm doing so well so I can do so well. Healing this wellness within. Growing it stronger within myself. Standing upon my own two feet. Knowing that all the negative voices are the clear signals of what to do the opposite of. As if they don't want the best for myself, I may have to do the opposite and start to do the best for myself. They may be old patterns and people that want to keep me in old cycles of behavior. I'm starting to move forward and heal myself and recover myself in mind, body, and spirit. And taking a full breath in and out. Uh, just checking in with your body sensations, how you're feeling, and um. Sometimes it is just good to have a cry. It's good to let some tears go that we might be holding on for so long. Or there might be feelings of outrage. And sometimes even with outrage, we've had to keep that in rage for so long because expressing of ourselves was never allowed. So sometimes when we've been done wrong, it's almost where there's a second degree wrongness of not even being able to express how wrong that felt. But being able to do it in a safe environment where you don't get hurt when other people don't get hurt. And allowing that connection to yourself, because EFT tapping is an emotional freedom technique, and some emotions aren't all positive, and some of even negative received emotions, once released, can feel a little bit more positive within. So it's really a perception on how we perceive these things. So I'm Dion from Eflation Support Services. I offer EFT tapping one-on-one -on -one online to go a little bit further and deeper into your own specific issues around this. So check out eflationsupportservices.com and I'll check, catch you in the next one. Bye for now.